hello today i'm going to uh, discuss sources of uh, indian history the sources of indian history are varied and in many languages and script indian and foreign often historian has uh, has to hunt for a pin in the his stack therefore the historian of the pre muslim india has to be a multi linguistic a specialist in epigraphy numismatic and archaeology even if the historian is well equipped with this skill his task of portraying a realistic and objective picture of the past is not smooth and easy because the ancient sources contain an admixture of fact and uh, fiction most of the literary sources and a quite few epigraphic sources appear like historical romances rather than historical chronicles that is why al biruni the famous muslim scholar who came to india in the 11th century rightly commented the hindus do not pay much attention to the historical order of things they are very careless in relating the chronological succession of their kings and when they are pressed for information are at a loss not knowing what to say they invariably take to tell telling albarini's observation are echoed by a fleet now i discuss the classification of uh, indian sources the sources of uh, indian history may broadly be divided into indigenous and foreign the indigenous sources may be subdivided into history epigraphic numismatic archaeology or monumental the foreign sources are mainly literary except for those cases of epigraphic evidence when the indigenous authors give one sided and distorted accounts due to their prejudice then the foreign evidence becomes a necessary corrective to indigenous uh, testimony i am going to discuss the indigenous sources the most important uh, uh, sources for the writing history of india already uh, said that fundamental division of the sources of history is uh, into indigenous and foreign further the indigenous sources is subdivided into literary epigraphic numismatic and archaeological the literary sources is of three kinds religious or sacred secular and historical of these the religious or traditional uh, sources may be labeled as non historical and secular sources as quasi historical the genuinely historical records are very few and uh, indian literature is partly sacred and partly secular the sacred literature contain the four vedas rigveda samaveda 
Ajurveda and Atharvana Veda, of which the Rigveda is the most ancient and gives much information regarding the political system, social organization, and economic condition of the Aryans. The religious works of Buddhist and Jain contain semi historical data as those make reference to historical person and events. The two great epics, the Ramayana and Mahabharata, give us an insight into the political and social condition in their times. The Puranas, which are 18 in number, are valuable to the historian. The Puranas con contain genealogies of kings, though they are used to be with the cautious. Puranas would uh, uh, give as all aspect of Hinduism, its uh, mythology, its uh, idol, idols, worship, its love of God, its uh, superstitions, festivals, ceremonies, and so and so. The secular literature include Kautilya's Arthasastra, Vishaka Dattas, uh, Mudra Rakshasa, Patanjali's Mahabhasya, Kalidasa's drama like uh, Shakuntala, uh, Basha's Sapnavasavadatta and uh, others. These works throw light on the social and cultural life of the people and uh, provide uh, some historical data. Really, historical works are uh, Arthasastra of Kautilya and uh, Raja Tarangani of Kalehana. Composition like Harsha Charita of Bana, Vikamanka Deva Charita of Bilhana, Navasha Shank Charita of Padma Gupta, Kumar Charita of Hemachandra, and Chandabardhai may be regarded uh, defectively historical rather than semi historical. Now, remaining uh, topic I will discuss tomorrow.